Okay, guys, God bless you, and welcome to This Is It for 321. Guys, I'm excited to be here. Um, I've been just very anxious to get you guys this video and to share this scripture with you. This is one scripture that is going to bring all the stuff I've shown you together to where you will know absolutely in your heart that it's been resolved. Your salvation has been resolved. The record that was kill, kept against you, you know, there's a record kept against you until you're converted. And when you get converted, turn, and the word converted means turned the opposite direction. When you get converted and you accept Christ as your, as your Savior and payment for all your sins, and that, that bill, that handwritten bill against you goes nailed to that cross and you are free. And the Bible says if the sun sets you free, you're free indeed. So here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to make sure you understand a couple definitions just real quick. Y'all know what covertly means? Let me show you something. See on my hat right here, this is kind of wild. So on my hat, it, it'll say covert parallel operations. I think, yeah, covert operations parallel. There it is. Now, this is really weird because I got this patch, and here's the whole idea. If you have the word covert written on a patch like you're doing something covert, it doesn't make it covert anymore. That's kind of the joke. So if you have the word, hey, I'm in a co very covert, uh, you know, <laughs> if you're telling somebody you're in a covert operation, it's not a covert operation at all. But what's so funny is the Lord God is out in front of everything so far that when he had me get this patch, I was working at the ark getting the place ready. We were going to get the night under the stars thing going. And I just thought that's just so kind of funny. It's just kind of weird. Covert parallel operations. And it says covert because that makes it not covert. You understand? So anyway, I love the, the way the Lord, you know, does things. You, you're going to get to see the Lord in this tonight for sure. Okay. Let me show you the word covert. Here it is. Covert. Covert. Okay. It means secretive, clandestine, surreptitious. Behind the scenes, uh, hidden, concealed, private, hush hush. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And so it's like, uh, it's hidden. You're not supposed to know about it. It's concealed. Now think about that. So if you have this written, and it, it's upside down, by the way, so you can see it. It says covert operations parallel. That's just the Lord showing who he is is why this so remember when i was out at the ark just trying to have a place for all these people that needed a place to live and we were all trying just to make it better and support it and do the best we could the lord uh communicated he wanted this get together called the night under the stars and before everybody got there the lord revealed in the scriptures and in the sky he revealed that one of our eyes goes up to heaven and one eye goes to the pit and he revealed it in front of witnesses, Corey and Zach, Jim and Karen, Alex and Alyssa. And he literally showed up as an eye in the sky. I mean, a perfect eye that was like a rainbow. It was green, pink, blue, and and with an X in the middle. It was crazy. Anyway, I'm going to show that to you. Y'all should know about that. Okay, but here we go. You ready? So isn't it strange that he would have me have a patch that says covert operations parallel, you know, which means it's not covert because there it is on my hat. So that makes it not covert. <laughs> so anyway, so let me show you something. Let me show you something that is covert. Okay. I'm going to show you something that's very covert. Okay. Here we go. So you see the guy, the guy in the slave collar, right? Y'all have seen this a lot. So what is it really? Well, this is a fetus right here and a fetus and that pink is an umbilical cord, another umbilical cord from the two fetuses. But what's so covert about it is when you turn it upside down, it becomes a locust coming out of the pit. So it's covertly hidden. It's no different than um, in the Vatican on the corner of the on the corner of the canopy right here. There's covertly a locust hidden right here. See the locust? 
Well, I'm able to see it because it's a spiritual gift that the Lord gave me, but this one's just hidden in plain sight, but it's not upside down. Let's, I'm going to stick with the ones that are upside down for a reason. So when you take, I'm sorry, this thing just kind of, oh, sorry, it jumped around on me. Just stick with me, guys. Here we go. So yeah, let me just stick with the stuff that's like right side up and, uh, and upside down, just to make this point, because y'all are going to get a scripture today that is so cool and so mind-boggling that it's it's just going to seal the deal in your brain. So this image right here, this is the list of popes, and there's a guy in a slave collar, and when you turn him upside down, it becomes a locust coming out of the pit. That being the eye, that being the eye, there's the mandibles and there the yellow wings, and then all this movement of what was his long hair as the wind washing underneath the wings. Okay, that's one example. So here's another example. So y'all have shown you this a hundred times. Image of the Virgin. But see, let me ask you a question. If you're looking at that image, do you know the truth just looking at the image? I know it's kind of a little bit of a loaded question, but you say, what do you mean? Well, see, you only are seeing half the truth when you look at that that image of the Virgin. See, you're seeing what looks like an image of the Virgin. But the truth is, it's an image of the Virgin, but it's disguised also as a dead sheep because the sheep is covertly hidden. Okay, now this is going to have everything to do with your salvation and being able to put anything to rest. That if you've been wondering, man, you know, sometimes this bothers me. I wonder if I'm seeing, you know, some people wonder about their salvation. Their, their salvation, but the Bible declares very clearly in 1 Corinthians 2 uh, that you should know, you should know. The word is hinosko, and it means to know absolutely that your salvation is secure. I'm going to show you tonight the scripture that the Lord gave me through one of my subscribers. She had posted it as just a, she posts support scripture sometimes, and it's super cool that I see a a scripture that's posted to support the video I did. Now, ready? Here we go. Let's do it. Now, again, let's look at maybe one or two more covert images. So, the image of the Virgin right here. You see the Virgin again? So, this was an image of the Virgin right here, and it was covertly a dead sheep. Here's another image of the Virgin right here, and it's covertly, if you look right over here, you can see the dragon, can't you? There's the eye of the dragon, the eye of the dragon, nose, mouth of the dragon. So there's the head of a dragon. So it's covertly hidden. Now here's one that's a real mind boggler. Here is the Vatican itself, the building, the Vatican. And there is the head of a serpent with the, the tongue. And then here's the whole building is a serpent. And then the whole thing is is a serpent wearing a crown and the building alongside of it, audience hall right here that I'm circling. That's the head of a serpent. Well, that's called hidden in plain sight. I mean, it's not very covert, but I mean, it is. Um, but now let me show you the scripture that I want to share with you. And I'm going to roll it out first. And then I'm going, I want to roll out the scripture that I've been talking about right now. I'm not going to make you guys wait for it. I'm just going to roll it out right now. Then I'm going to go back and grab all this other stuff the Lord's let me show you. And we're just going to dogpile it on. And here we go. This is so cool. This is as cool as it gets. Okay, so let's go to everybody. Get your Bibles out tonight. You're going to want to highlight all of this stuff. So get your Bibles out. Get ready. Let's just have the best time. Um, and again, I, I apologize that I haven't been able to, to get here sooner. I've had a lot of stuff just that's uh, been falling on my plate just to help others. Okay, so let's let's look at... Colossians 2. So I'm going to I'm going to read through this but then I'm going to go straight for the sh the the part I want you to see first and then we'll come back and talk about some more of this. For I would you have you know what great conflict I have for you and them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love unto look at this all the riches unto all the riches of the full assurance of understanding 
to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father and of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's let's just talk about that. I'm not going to break it down yet, not this part. But I want to just talk about what does that say exactly? Let's look at it one more time. That your heart, so think, just insert your heart might be comforted, being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance, complete assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Jesus Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So it's telling you, hey, he wants you to have full, 100% complete assurance, like no doubt, zero doubt, that you know in your heart you have all the riches of the full assurance. So, you know, the full assurance is the the greatest uh, treasure you can have. So let, let, let me just expand on that for one sec. Do you know what the greatest treasure in this world is? The greatest treasure. I've had a million dollars. The greatest treasure is knowing that you're saved. There's no greater treasure. There's none. Knowing that you're saved and that your sins have been blotted out and you are, you're going to be okay. Your eternal soul is going to be okay. You are going to be okay forever. Is there anything else you'd rather know than that? I mean, well, I would rather know that and have that in my heart and know it than you can, there's nothing you can give me to take that away from me. Nothing. There's nothing I'd want. So, that your heart might be comforted being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance. See it? So you're going to have the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement. So you're going to acknowledge full recognition, it says, of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Jesus Christ. So this is huge. I mean, and we're going to get to it, but first we're going to keep going. So you're going to get the full assurance of understanding to a, the acknowledgement of all the riches of God the Father and of Jesus Christ. Is there anything else you'd rather have? I was like, oh my God, no. That's it. That's all. I mean, you want to talk about winning the lottery right here. And it says, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then let's let's skip down a little bit. And as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus, therefore walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. So now it's saying, now that you know all this, just walk in him. That's all you got to do. Abounding in thanksgiving, beware any man try and spoil you through vain philosophy. Okay, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you were circumcised of the flesh, and now buried with him in baptism, wherein you are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. So it's saying you've already been raised with him, I mean, spiritually. I mean, you haven't gotten your inheritance, which is your glorified body. But it says, and ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your sins and your uncircumcision of your flesh, he hath quickened together with him, having forgiven you and all your trespasses. Here you go. Ready? You see all these big, dark blue things? Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Okay, what it's saying right here is, look, he has blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Because, see, you had a legal record being kept against you in the pit. I've, how many times have I told you? You have one eye that goes to the pit, and we're going to go over all this. 
You have one eye that goes to a pit to a cell where there's a locust feeding off you every day of your life until you get converted. Once you get turned up, it cuts the cord. You, that locust dies. The worm dies. The worm turns. You're done. And then your eyes become single and your whole body's full of light. Now, how many times have y'all heard me say this? Are y'all ready for it to become so real? You're probably just going to sit there and cry like I did. When I, when I unpacked this, I sat there and cried. That's all I could do. I was just like, do y'all remember when I went to Chinati? And the Lord gave me the two rocks in the riverbed. And he told me to look down and just pick up these two random black rocks. And I'm like, pick up those two rocks, pick up those two rocks. Before my jump, when I was scouting out where I was going to put my LZ, my landing zone, in this dried out riverbed in the middle of the freaking desert. I was like, okay. And he has me pick up two rocks. Then he says, now put them together. And he was showing me that he had taken me to use me to show everybody what being on the rock was, that the two halves of the same rock had been put back together, which is our Lord God in us and through us. Watch. Get ready to freak out okay here it is so he's blotted out the handwriting so there was a a bill that of ordinances and that we broke the law that was against us and was contrary to us and he took it out of the way by nailing it to the cross okay now watch ready remember all this stuff that's covert okay yep so there it is so there is a image of a guy in a slave color represents you and me and all the angels that got trapped in a host body. And then it covertly, you turn it upside down and it becomes a locust from the pit. Same thing with the virgin. It becomes a dead sheep, becomes a dragon. Okay, now let me show you the scripture. Ready? Here we go. So bl blotting out. To obliterate, that is to obliterate, to erase tears, figuratively to pardon your sin. Okay, so the word blotting out means to, to pardon your sin and the handwriting. And we're going to look at this word in a little while. See it? Chirograph. It's so crazy. See the word chirograph or chirograph? Chirograph. It is a manuscript, a legal document or bond of handwriting. So that handwriting of ordinances, it means of laws and decrees, was that was against us. Ready? Free to say it out loud. What does that say? What does it say? It says kata. That was down against us. Do you know the word against? You can see it over and over. It's L. So this is the bill that's against us. And the word is down, which was contrary to us. See it? Contrary. Read it for yourself. Covertly contrary to. That is opposed an opponent. An adversary. Oh my God. That was contrary to us. And he took it out of the way. See it says in the middle. From among before among us. He took it out of the way. Ready? His purpose was to make one new man from the two. Thus making peace. Breaking down the middle wall of partition making one new man from the two, thus making peace. Because your bill and your, the handwriting that kept uh, was kept against you, as I've said over and over and over again, is down. It's down. It says it right there. It was down, having blotted out the handwriting that was against it. Look right here. Kata. Down. Now, remember, I'm going to show you pictures now which was contrary to us, covertly opposite an opponent. You know what covertly means? Just like I showed you on my hat. It means secret. But guess what was secret? Down.
So see, in all these images that I've shown you over and over and over again, all the stuff that was hidden, those who try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. So see, the handwritten bill that's covertly against us, so that kills us, was that record that's down. See, so when you're looking at an image of the Virgin, are you looking at the truth? No, you're looking at part of the truth. But when your eye becomes single, <laughs> then your whole body is full of light. And it shows you pass from death to life. And watch. Now I'm just going to do scripture. You ready? Hold on to your hat. And then we're just going to loop it back. Let's go to Matthew. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if the eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. Okay, so now let's go in Esword to Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. Okay, so now here's where all that super cool spiritual gifting stuff comes in now. Are you ready? Here we go. Watch this. It says that the, that the light of the body is the eye. It says it right there. The word eye, right? Ophthalmos, like ophthalmologist. The eye. And it says, there it is, the eye. Therefore, if thine eye be single, I'm going to click on the word single, as a particle of union properly folded together. Because if I have a piece of paper and I have one eye that's up, one eye that's down, I fold the paper together and both the eyes are up. <laughs> I told you. That's why I always do this. One eye goes up, one eye goes down. When you turn the other one up, you watch, you fold it together. And see, the handwriting in the bill in Colossians 2, which I'm showing you right now, which puts it all together in a nice, neat little package, proves the handwriting in the bill that was held against you your whole life that proved you were guilty was down. And now down has been taken and nailed to the cross. And you are no longer guilty as charged. Because it was covertly hidden. Down was secretly hidden. So when you look at an image of the Virgin, did you know it was actually a dead sheet? Yes or no? No, but when you became aware of it, which is what I'm going to show in the scriptures, the Bible says to be made aware that there was a hidden down, then you go, oh my God, I can see. And then your eyes become single. 100% nylon. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so ready? Watch this. Let's do it again. Let's go to Isaiah. So Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Okay, so we're going to do Isaiah 61 right now. Okay, I'm going to click on this bottom box. If you could read that out loud, please read this with me. Does that say to open the senses, especially the eyes? To be observant, it's just a yes or no, and it does, because it's right there. To open the senses, especially the eyes. That's the opening of prisons, and it says to redouble salvation from sin. To redouble your eyes, especially the eyes. That shows You've had your sins annulled, disannulled, because your eyes have been redoubled. Now it's not just an image of the Virgin anymore, is it? It's an image of the Virgin, but when you see it's a dead sheep, all of a sudden you can see, oh my God. But this is, then you realize you've been carried away captive into a system. The system is the flesh, and the flesh is your enemy. And here you go. Now watch. So here it is, the spirit of the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah is upon me because the Lord, the self-existent eternal Jehovah has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. 
He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. The word captives means those that were transported in captivity, led away. We're angels. We were led away. That's why the largest altar in the world is a bunch of angels being led away, turning into a dead sheep that's melting into semen. So proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison. There it is. To redouble the eyes. I've shown you that before. But now we're going to apply it every single time. Now we're going to apply it to Colossians. Ready? Let's go back to Colossians. Ready? So, again, Colossians 2. Did you know the virgin was a dead sheep? It's a yes or no. No. The Lord let me show it to you. And that's the way you feed the sheep. That's why Jesus told Peter in John 21. When, Je when Peter sees Jesus risen from the dead, he jumps on the boat and he swims over to him. He's like... And, and so Jesus and Peter had their reconciliation talk because Jesus denied Peter three, I mean, Peter denied Jesus three times before he was crucified. He said, no, I don't know him. No, I don't know him. No, I don't know him. Jesus said he would do it. And then when, when he sees him uh, on the on the seashore, when they're fishing after Jesus has been crucified, he's like, oh my God, it's it's the Lord. He told him, throw the boat on the right, the net on the right side of the boat. And he swims over and it's Jesus. And Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord. And he says, feed my sheep. Do you know the only way I really know how to feed you is this. Turn everything upside down so you can see the truth. Because the truth is concealed. It's the glory of Elohim to conceal a matter. How do they conceal it? They turn it upside down. See, Elohim conceals it all. Jesus reveals it all. <laughs> do you all get it? Okay, so... The second time, Peter, do you love me? And he says, yes, I love you, Lord. And he says, then feed my sheep. And then a third time, Jesus asked Peter, and he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter was grieved, and he said, Lord, you know I love you, and you know, you know all things. And he said, then feed my sheep. Peter, when you were younger, you went where you wanted. But when you're older, you'll stretch out your hands, and others will take you where you don't want to go. Jesus told these words to Peter to signify what kind of death he would die to glorify God. He died on a cross upside down. That's why Jesus told him, I'm going to call you Petros, which means little piece of rock. And then upon this piece of rock, Petra, which would be Jesus right side up, I will build my church and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So it's a right side up, right side up, upside down paradigm, right side up, upside down. Jesus would be the foundation up. Peter would be upside down and then he would have the keys to get Show you how that's the system. This makes you whole again. You get it? Because it's all about your eyes. It's all about your ability to perceive. Because your eye is a dimensional trough to either heaven. One goes to heaven. One goes to hell. A lot of people that sell out to the music industry and sell out for whatever reasons, they make a deal with the devil, and the devil takes over both eyes. And then they're done, and he owns them. And see, we get converted, and our eye gets turned up, and then the Lord takes up residency in us. Full residency, kicks out the devil, cuts the, cuts the connection to the pit. Locust dies. I will restore to you the years of locusts is eaten. He, like, cuts the line to the pit, and there's no more locusts feeding off you. You're no longer connected to the pit. Okay, let's keep going. You ready? So here it is. Colossians 2. Now watch this. And you who were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, because that's the evil thing, he has quickened together with him. Look at the word quicken together. It means to reanimate conjointly. Wow, that's a big word. Conjointly means together with him. Two together, you get it? Okay, now let me show you. Let me go to some pictures. Let's have a little picture thing. Watch this. Let me, let me just give you a really cool understanding of pictorial evidence. So here it is. Take a look at this. Good is up. Evil is down. Light is up. Dark is down. God is up. Satan is down. Up, up, down, down. Okay. Here we go. Now watch. Let's, let's apply it to our, the eyes. So here you go. Here's a set of eyes. Let me show you. So here's one eye that's got Jesus looking through it. And here's another eye that's got the pit looking, looking through it. So the Bible says the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is single, the whole body is full of light. So is this set of eyes single? It's a yes or no. The answer is no. There's 
Jesus looking through one, and then uh, the demon from the pit looking out the other. So how do you make your eye single? Well, you got to get this one to be the same as this one. So one's up and one's down. So watch this. So if I was to drag that blue arrow over there, that one goes to the pit, and I'll put the red arrow right there. That one goes up. And let me show you what that would look like. So here we go. So one is up and one goes down. So this one represents Jesus looking through your eye up. This is like Peter was crucified upside down, but he had the key to the kingdom of heaven. So you just turn it the other direction and the two become one. Instead of being in opposition to each other, they become the same. So your eye becomes single and your whole body is full of light. Isn't it crazy that the word single literally means folded together? And I always do this and I... I never knew. I didn't know that when I started doing it. It just happened that way. So the Lord knew it. So look at that. So then your eyes have been folded together. Your whole body's full of light. Instead of, look, instead of one being light that goes up and then the other one being dark that goes down. So light is up. Good is up. God is up. And the other one, evil is down, dark is down, Satan is down. So that, just apply it to your eyes now. So here it is. There it is. The, Bi the Bible says, if your eye be single, single, your whole body is full of light. It says, as a particle of union properly folded together. There it is. Okay, now we're just going to keep going. Ready? Let's see. We saw Isaiah, the opening of prison. And that means to redouble the eye. Let's go to Luke. Okay, Luke 4, chapter 18. Ready? Sorry, I'm, I'm really excited. Not Luke 4, chapter 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This is so exciting. Here you go. Okay, here we go. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. So this is Jesus taking his ministry. And see, he was handed the book of Isaiah. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, right here. So Jesus is in the synagogue. They hand him the book of Isaiah, and he opens up where it's written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Look at the word heal. Watch this. It means to cure, to make whole. See it? To heal the brokenhearted and the recovering of sight to the blind. Look, the restoration of sight right here, and it says to look up. So, see, now what? Does that mean that you just look up like that and your sight's restored? No. It's that you apply that understanding. Look at this. Look at the root of the word. It means to perceive, to regard, to take heed of, to become aware of, to be aware of. Now watch this. Again, let me go give you the example. So were you aware that this is a dead sheep? Yes or no? If you just saw the virgin, were you aware? Like, oh my God, it's a dead sheep. The only way you would know that is to turn it the other way and look at it, to perceive so the word anacrina, remember in 1 Corinthians 2, it says those that are spiritual discerneth all things. And the word is anacrino. It's uh, uh, the word number 350. And it means to vigorously judge from down to up. So when I look at the image of the virgin, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Let me turn it the other way. Let me study it. Yeah, that's a dead sheep. Same with Madonna. Madonna had the image of the virgin. I turned it upside down. I'm like, it's not a dead sheep. It's a dragon. Who kills, you know, God's angels? The dragon. Who's the dragon? The serpent, Satan, and his army of demons. See? There you go. Now look at the perfection of this. Again, so let's just look at that. What is it? Well, it's an image or a carving of the virgin in a Madonna video. But I've been converted, so I'm going to invert that thing and discern what it is. Oh, yeah, it's a dragon for sure. See the dragon? It's a dragon. 
Oh, wow. So now the application of the understanding. Now go, let's go look at the word Catholic in the Bible. So the word Catholic, I was born and raised Catholic. Uh, my parents turned against me when I got converted. My whole family turned against me like I was evil. It was the weirdest thing in the world because before I got converted, I did some pretty bad stuff and my parents knew about a lot of it and it was okay then. But then when I got converted and I became good, then when I, you know, when I, when I was behaving totally differently, not lying, telling the truth, doing the right thing, then all of a sudden I was evil. It was the weirdest thing. So here it is. Catholic. See it right here. Catholic. Catholicos. It's from, it's Greek right here. Greek. It's kata. Down. Completely. Oh, wow. That's why, that's why when you go to the Vatican and you see right here where they're going to go under, when they're going to walk to the stairs under the canopy, which represents the flesh, that canopy in the middle, those four posts with the dragon on it, the locust on it, the queen of heaven, the four posts that go up that look like DNA because that's what they represent. They represent the host body, which Lucifer owns. The dawning of his own creation. Told you. Here you go. Look what's right there. Completely down. Not just one down. Both down. Complete evil. Twin female. So the twin female. See, because male is up, female is down. That's the energy system. But twin female is the ultimate evil energy. And that's the pit. And that's... uh that it was the ultimate thing to find out. That was Parthenogenesis. And that's where the Lord led me. Now, let me give an example of that. So, here is a set of eyes that are fully functioning just a bit. And that's what happens in the end of the world. Anyone that takes the mark, you're handing over possession from the pit, from the, from the angel of the bottomless pit. What you're really doing when you take that mark is you're handing over possession of your body as a host for the angel of the bottomless pit to fully occupy and you'll be a double downer right then and there there's a lot of double downers already right now i can see it, it happens all the time i see it on a daily basis um people are changing but uh when they when they roll out the mark for the sheep that's going to be that's going to be the deal. So here we go. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21 and it said and there shall be no more curse so look right here, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne and of God and the Lamb. Uh, just a quick addendum. In the little video I'm going to show you when I went to Chinati, when I left to go catch my airplane, I had to drive an hour to get to my airplane. Then my airplane took off this little strip and we had to fly about 25 minutes to get to where I was going to jump. But in the time it took for me to leave, a giant thunderstorm rocked that entire valley and it flash flooded. My LZ, my tarp should have been gone. My wind blades should have been gone. There were people that were there that told me, we thought you were going to jump into a raging river and drown. That's what they're telling me. Because it's not just a river. It's like sand river. It's like just mixed with desert sand. It's like slush. I saw one when I was there. It's like a fast moving slushy. I was like, that's insane. Well, watch this when I'm going to, I'm going to show you my video from that. But let's go to Revelation 21 right now because this is as cool as it gets. Revelation 21. Uh, I'm sorry. I should have been, I should have said Revelation 22. And it says, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Look at the word curse. Say it out loud. Say that word right there. Kata. Kata anathema. Kata anathema. Kata anathema. So the word kata right here is see it? Kata down. Down. Down is the curse. The curse is down. See it? Kata anathema. Okay, now let's go back. Let me show you a scripture from Job. It says, How long will they speak these things? How long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Doth God pervert judgment or doth the Almighty pervert justice? 
that thy children have sinned against him, and he hath cast them away for their transgressions. Okay, now think about this. We are exiles. The Lord God told us, live out your lives as exiles. So if we sin against the Most High, that would make sense that we're exiles. Well, what would we have to be? Angels. Why do you think the largest altar in the world is a bunch of angels coming in through the window, through the light? Because we're light beings. That's why it's at the, at the window right there. So the angels are all coming in, Elohim. They're turning into a sheep because that's what the serpent race slaughters. And that's actually the mouth of the serpent, the entire building. And then we're, the angels are turning into male and re, female reproductive systems and melting into semen. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Here we go, watch. Doth God pervert judgment? Or doth the Almighty pervert just, justice? Job 8, let's go look. Okay, brace yourself. Doth God pervert? Look at the word for God. Oh, it's L. It says, doth L, the Almighty God, pervert judgment? Let's look at the word pervert. Turn upside down? Question mark? No. Does he pervert judgment? No. Or doth the Almighty pervert justice? What's the word pervert? Turn upside down. So who doesn't ever turn things upside down here? Who turns things upside down? Elohim. Elohim. Uh-huh. Woe unto them who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord and their works are in the darkness. And they say, who seeth us? Who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So when you get trapped in the system, you have to turn it the other way to see the truth. Because the system hides the truth by inverting it. End of story. It's proven a thousand ways. There it is. Look at this. Does L turn upside down judgment? No. Satan turns you upside down by getting you in the system. Now, let's have a look at Van Halen. Remember this album cover where one kid is like screaming and it looks like a male and female version of like an identical twin? See the longer hair here? It's kind of interesting. Like male and female energy in the same thing. What's going on? And this one, I mean, it's kind of weird. Like, this one was up here, was up here, and now it's slid down, and the two are one. But this one doesn't want to be with this one, obviously. Let's look at the word divest. The word divest means to undress or strip, especially of clothing. See it? To divest means to undress or strip, especially of clothing. Also, it means to rid oneself or free oneself of and to take oneself away from another person. So, so to divest yourself of, of another person. Okay, let me show you this. So since your handwriting, the handwriting, the handwriting scroll against you, the legal document right here, the handwriting of ordinance that was down which was the record against us, which is down, which was contrary to us, covertly an opponent. So our opponent, the one that's trying to kill us, see, it says opposite, antagonistic, contrary. So blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, like laws that was down, and was contrary to us, opposite, watch, opposite, but watch this, covertly opposite as an opponent, like the virgin thing, and he took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, ready, having spoiled the principalities and powers by making a show of them openly. So, that's what the Lord's allowing me to do right now, to show openly. Why do you think there's this Gene Ravel channel where all these weirdos have a daily hate party? Oh, I've not seen it. He's a liar. I stand against him. Well, the word against is down. No kidding. And I stand against them. 
the opposite direction. Ooh. But I have peace and joy, and they have a continual hate party. <laughs> and they're over and over. It's like, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Blotting out the handwriting ordinances that was down against us, which was contrary to us covertly in an opponent, and taking it out of the way. Look at this. Having spoiled the principalities. Here's why they're so upset. Spoiled. Ready? To divest holy oneself. Look at that. To divest holy. It means to divest to strip and make naked. I told you, their bow was made quite naked. That's why they're all freaking out. That's why they have no peace. Listen, if that channel, any any person at that channel had peace, why aren't they just like, whatever? It's just, oh my God, click this and click that. It's like, okay. And the virgin's a dead sheep and the Vatican's a snake. And the building alongside of it's a snake, birthing out of a snake, parthenogenesis, virgin genesis, twin female reptilian race. Told ya. <laughs> That's why they're freaking out. Okay, here it is. And having spoiled, here it is, to take off from, to unclothe, to divest ourselves. So see, look. When we unclothe them and we see them for what they are, the insect serpent race, then look, we divest ourselves. We cut ourselves away from them and we become one in Christ. And then they know that we know. And then they have to live with that. They probably can't get any, you know, peace because they know we know. And if we know, that means they know the big boss knows. And if the big boss knows, you know what that means? Not good. Nope, not good. So here it is. So having spoiled the principalities and powers, look at this, spoiled to unclothe, to divest ourselves from the principalities. Look at this, a commencement, a beginning, a magistrate of power. Do you remember Jude and angels, which kept not their first estate? Same word, beginning, commencement. Uh-huh. He is kept in everlasting forward and backwards chains, ligaments of the body. Told you. The body is your enemy. The host body itself is your enemy. So it is. Having spoiled the principalities and powers, look at this. Superhuman delegated influence. Do you remember where that, where that word superhuman comes from? Do you remember where that comes from? Superhuman Delegated influence? Let me show you exactly where it comes from. Ephesians 2, ready? When in times past you walked according to the course of this world. It is all Satan. It's all his thing. According to the prince of the power of the air. Who's that? The prince of the power of the air is the spirit. It's Satan. The spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. See it right there? So, who do we use to walk walk with? The prince of the power of the air. Who's that? He's the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Let's click on the word spirit. What does it say? A current of air. It says, you know, your breath, a spirit. There it is. Superhuman angel, comma, demon. I'm going to highlight this blue. Angel, comma, Demon. There it is, right there. Superhuman. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> How much fun is this, you guys? Are y'all having as much fun as I am? Uh-huh. They're toast. They're done. Stick a fork in them. They're done. Okay, here we go. So, the Lord spoiled them, having spoiled, again, over and over, to divest wholly from, by making them naked, the principalities, it means a commencement, a beginning, magistrate power, and the powers, superhuman delegated influence, and made a show of them openly. Look at this, to make a show, to exhibit. What do you think I'm doing? The Vatican's a snake. The building, the building next to it, it's a snake. It's Parthenogenesis. Now let's go and look at some of that stuff. 
let me show you what happens when you get your record cleared. Uh, it says, likewise, deacons must be grave, uh, not be grave, not double tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy liquor, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Look what that says, denoting union, possession instrumentality addition because now we're walking besides Christ uh, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience because now we're walking with Christ you get it now look what clear conscience means also it means to see completely look see to see completely to understand or become aware of. Aware of what? Well, the virgin's not just the virgin. It's also a dead sheep. Now I've become aware of that. My conscience got cleared. So the Lord let me see the whole story instead of part of the story. By un un unbinding me to the demonic force that's down. I'm no longer bound to the demonic down force. And I've been set free, and my two eyes have become single. You see the perfection in this. This is absolute perfection. Uh-huh. There it is. Now, let's keep going. Okay, so, and then, again, let me just make the point just one more time, because this is how I have it laid out. Is that the virgin? Uh, Well, yeah, but it's also a dead sheep. Okay? And the reason I know that is because I've been converted and my sight's been recovered. And that's what the Bible says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has sent me to preach, uh, you know, good news to the captives and the uh, recovering of sight to look up the restoration of sight. So how did I get my sight restored? I was able to look up and see the whole picture, not just half the picture. There you go. Now let's take a look at the Vatican. Twin female, serpent race. That's the serpent race is twin female. And now I'm exposing them openly. I'm making a public show of, this is, you know, the Catholic Church is called the Whore of Babylon, right? The Whore. This is, you're looking at her. The Bible calls the twin female system the Whore in the Bible. The Whore of Babylon. Here it is. You're looking at this right there. Twin female. There it is. Serpent race. Now I'm making a public show of them openly. And they're being publicly shown. Let me show you Ozzy Osbourne real quick. Did you know here's an Ozzy Osbourne album called No Rest for the Wicked. You see the two twin girls, the little girls right here? Look at this girl's eyes right here. See it? This is the serpent race. And then here's going to be the new little doll from that comes from the two. And there's Ozzy. Look, Ozzy Osbourne. What what about Ozzy's last album? What about Ozzy's last album right here? What happened? The twin females came up from the pit with the symbol of Mut, which is the primordial goddess of uh, of uh, of um, fertilization. So the fertility goddess, I'm sorry, fertility fertility goddess, and the primordial goddess of their creation, and their twin female. There it is. See, came up from the pit. And the two turn into one, meaning the ultimate evil, the twin female, is coming up from the pit, taking over the host body system. Proven. Right there, using Ozzy. Easy. There it is. And what's the difference between these two twin females and this, the Vatican? Nothing. It's the same. What about these girls from the Women's March? Remember, they're both dressed as vaginas. What did they say? Millie Weaver goes, how long did it take you to make your costumes? Since the beginning of time. Genesis. Since Genesis. Yeah, the beginning of time. Genesis. And the other girl goes, we're source material. It's where you come from. She's absolutely right. Absolutely correct. Twin female is where the host body system comes from. The serpent. Okay, here is Ian at the Bud Light commercial. What's he got? Twin females, one on each side of him. You see, he's boxed in. Look at that. Here's the Catholic coin. Uh, for, um, you know, the thing that they're stabbing everybody with. And this is a, a guy, and he's got a female on each side of him giving him the, giving him that shot because it's all about two acts. 
the whole thing, guys. Why do you think Ozzy Osbourne has an album called The Ultimate Sin? And then he's got this female dominatrix sending him forth out of the pit. And he's part human, part locust from the pit. Creature from the pit. He's being sent forth. Did y'all know that Drake, you know, Drake, he just came out with a new album. Here's one of his other ones. See the scorpion? Because he's fully, he's fully imbued by that source. Here's some of the lines out of his, uh, one of his songs. You my twin, you my twin, you my treacherous little twin. You my twin, you my treacherous little twin, you my twin, you my treacherous little twin. Those are some rocking lyrics there, Drake. Really good stuff. Anyway, here's his album cover. Cover. Look what it says. Treacherous twins. And he did this with someone else. And just take a look at what you're looking at. Are they both sticking out their tongues? They sure are. There you go. See, it manifests into the physical realm. So let me ask you a question. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a picture. See the picture? What is that? You see the sheep right here? See the sheep? The sheep was actually covertly down, hidden. You weren't supposed to really see it because the Lord had me make it visible for you because this is what you really see as the tattoo on the person's arm. You see this raptor, but I could see, oh no, that's a sheep in the mouth of the raptor. And they do it to make like a yin-yang reptile race. Killing the sheep race. One right side up, one upside down. Why do you think the Vatican's a reptile? It's a snake. What's in the mouth of the snake? A sheep. Hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you. Hey, Alex, why'd you put a dead sheep on my face? And why'd you make a serpent eating me? Because I'm the serpent race. There you go. Or he's, he's connected to it. And, you know, he may not be a double downer, but he's connected to it. So just like the Matrix, Agent Smith can go through anyone. Uh, Satan, First, Second Timothy 2. Uh, here, I'm going to show you Second Timothy 2. Watch this. This is how you can understand the way Satan can work through people. He just takes hold of them. Watch this. Hang on one sec. Let me just pull up Second Timothy 2. Okay, Second Timothy chapter 2. Right down here. Uh, here. It says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Look at this, guys. To set oneself opposite of oneself. <laughs> it's like, okay. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If peradventure, God will give them repentance. Look at the word repentance. By implication, reversal. See it? To the acknowledging of the truth that they may recover themselves out of the snare, snare a trap, turns you upside down, of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. See it? So the devil can take someone captive at his will because one eye still goes to the pit, to a locust, and if he wants to grab you and use you, he can get a hold of you. But when you've been turned up, you cut the line of the pit and your eyes became single and your whole body's full of light. And it tells you in Colossians 2, now let's go hit the home run. Ready? Let's go back to Colossians 2. Ready? This is going to be fun. Colossians 2. Ready? Here we go. Now it's time to comfort. I want to comfort your hearts. I want to give you what I have. I have, I have, I have everything. I have everything. I have peace. I have the peace of God. I want to give it to you. I've shown you. And here's the scriptures. He said, for I would have you know what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. Because he wants them. He wants to get them a place of assembly, a contest, figuratively an effort or anxiety because a fight, a race. Because, see, I have the same thing for you. 
I sit here and I do these videos. I've done 4,000 plus videos over the years because I have a conflict for you. I want you to come with me. I want us to go home. We go to heaven. That's what I want. I want you to be at peace. I want you to be okay. I want you to lay your head down at night and go, it's going to be okay. My eternal security is taken care of. I'm good to go. Yes. Trust the Lord. That their hearts might be comforted. Let's start here. Comforted to call near. That is invite toward to invoke near. Being knit together. Ready? To drive together. That is to unite. And here we go. In love. Ready? The word love, benevolence, that's where you help people because you sh it's just the right thing to do. Like not leaving a bunch of people homeless that didn't have a way to take care of themselves. There's no way to do that. I couldn't do that. Love, that is affection or benevolence. Okay, ready? That your hearts might be comforted being knit together in love unto all all riches ready let's look at the word all it means the whole like all of them all riches wealth and fullness of the full assurance ready entire confidence the entire confidence let, let me change my color real quick i'm sorry i want to keep that the bright yellow one moment here we go bright yellow there we go okay to the full assurance, ready? So this is your heart. The full assurance of understanding, ready? A mental putting together. It's a super cool word. It's sunesis, watch this. Mental putting together to send or to put together. Okay, the full assurance of understanding. Here you go. A mental putting together or understanding to the acknowledgement. Here you go. Epinosis. See it? Recognition. That is by implication full discernment. Let me give you an example there. Full discernment. Is that just a raptor or is that a raptor? that's eating a sheep it's a raptor that's killing a sheep so now you're looking at the entire thing because you have you have all the riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery it means through the idea of silence a mystery of god and of the father and of christ in whom are hid Treasure by implication, secret treasure who are hid. All the treasures, deposit of wealth, of wisdom. And I'm going to click on the root of the word wisdom. Clear and wise and knowledge. And the word knowledge is knowing, the act of knowing and ready to know absolutely. So we have the full assurance 100 percent guarantee full assurance from the war from the word from god you have 100 percent assurance and now let me show you watch this now up to the full acknowledgement of the mystery of god and of christ so we know the mystery in whom all the treasures are hidden and we have received Jesus Christ, the Lord. So walk in him, rooted, and the word rooted just means to become stable, figuratively to become stable, rooted and built up in him and established to confirm the faith, the reliance upon Christ for salvation, the truth itself, And you are complete. Look at this. You are complete. Look at this. To make replete. Do you know what that means? Do y'all know what the word make replete means? 
you are complete in him. The word make replete means to fill up again with that which was gone. Like if you have to replete all your troops because you've been in battle, that means all the guys that got wiped out, you go get a whole bunch of new guys and fill it back up. Fill up all the troops again. So we have been made replete. We've been filled up again with Christ. To make replete, ready, in him, which is the head of all principality, commencement, in whom we are also circumcised, buried with him in baptism, buried with, look at this, ready, to assimilate spiritually. That's so cool. We have been assimilated spiritually. Look at it. With him in baptism, wherein you are risen with him. Look at look, look at this word right here. Risen with him. Get ready. This is so cool. Risen with him to rouse from death, which is down, to keep company with now. So we've been roused from down, denoting union with him. See it? Through the, uh, through the phase and the operation, look at the word operation, the efficiency energy of God who hath raised him from the dead and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has quickened together, ready? Quickened together to reanimate conjointly. With him having forgiven all your trespasses, blotting out, look at it, to pardon your sin, the handwriting. Okay, now I want to show you something. You see the word paragraph? Y'all are going to freak out. The handwriting of ordinances that was down, that was down, contrary to us, and was contrary, covertly our adversary. So see, our covert, our hidden adversary was down. Told you. Isn't it wild? He had me at a place called the ark, and he had me reveal our other eye in the presence of witnesses. He said, if you step out on faith, Jonathan, I will show up tonight. What does that mean? I'll show up. The Lord's going to show up. He did. He showed up as an eye in the sky with all the all the stars out. And he said, I'll show up and prove your other eye is a star. And it is. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us down and was contrary, covertly in an opponent to us. And he took it out of the way. Ready? Look at the word handwriting now. Ready? It's called a chirograph. Y'all want to freak out? Let's freak out together. Watch this. How many times have you seen me do this? His purpose was to make one new man from the two. You see me do that, right? Did you know what a chirograph is? Ready? Let me show you something. It's a handwritten bill that shows ownership of something or... You owe something, and they used to write them out in the same exact bill on the same piece of paper, and then each person got half of it. See, it's the exact same thing written on this half as this half. So one's right side up, one's upside down. They would cut it like this, you know, like the triangles that I showed you. This is, I'm going to show you this exact thing out of Google Images. They would literally cut it serrated so they would have to match up and you would have to get the other half back. And, and then that showed you had ownership. <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, ready? You want to see another one? Here's another one. Ready? Look at that. So, look, so here's one right here. It shows. Let me show you this. Let's see. Let's show this one. Look at the, look at the, look at the cuts, the way they split it. Okay, you have it written right there. You have it written right there. And then you cut it, you know. Okay, guess what? That's like male, female, like put an M and a W next to each other. Yeah. And you have to get them both 
and put them together to show you own it again. You want to see something even crazier? <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Oh, this is so exciting. This is so cool. Ready? Watch this. Okay. Here is another. Okay. Let, you know what? Let's. I'm going to slow down and I'm going to read this. I want you to read it. Okay. Let's see. Kirograph. Here we go. Okay. I think I'm saying it right. Kirograph or Chirograph is a medieval document was written in duplicate. Okay, it was written in duplicate, sometimes in triplicate, and sometimes in quadruplicate on a single piece of paper parchment with the Latin word kerographum, uh, occasionally replaced by some other term written across the middle, then cut through the separate parts, uh, then cut through to separate, separate the parts. I'm sorry. And this also refers to the papal decree. Look at this, the papal decree, whose circulation is limited to Roman curia. Okay, in Greek, it simply means handwritten. And then it says, the intention of the paragraph was to produce two or more identical written copies of a legal agreement that could be retained by each party to the transaction and, if necessary, verified at a later date through the comparison with one another, typically used for titles. So the cut it so they would cut it in half. The cut itself would generally be made with a wavy or serrated edge running through the word chirograph to allow the copies to be matched physically as a safeguard against forgery. The practice of separating the copies with an irregular cut was also gave rise to the description of the documents as indentured. You know what an indentured servant is? You're trying to work off your debt to the one that owns the place. Uh-huh. And can you imagine in the Bible it says that your chirograph, your Chirograph or chirograph, your two different halves, like right side up, upside down, has been nailed to the cross and taken out of the way. There's no longer a bill against you. He's, the Lord has ownership. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see something really crazy? Remember I showed y'all my house a long time ago when I was redoing the house? Look on the front. There were three head symbols. See those red head symbols? That's the number eight in Hebrew. And then look at the three crosses of Calvary. Right up here on the top, that's what they put. I'm sorry. Right here on the top where my finger is, when they left Egypt, they put blood on the on the doorposts and the lintel before they left Egypt so the angel of death wouldn't kill the firstborn of Israel in the house or anyone anyone that had that blood on their doorpost was saved from the angel of death and then the angel of death took out the firstborn of, of Egypt and uh, that's when they left okay that symbol right there is a head symbol. A head symbol is the number eight in the Bible, uh, uh, in, in Hebrew. Let me show you one of those chirographs. There it is. It's like this. This is called the, the foot fine right here. So the landowner can own this piece. And then each, uh, like the person that's party to it, there's different pieces. And they're cut the same way. But look at what it is. It's an upside down head. This is an upside down head symbol, you guys. Do you know how crazy that is? That a chirograph would be an upside down head symbol showing a servitude to the landowner. <laughs> you know who owns the land? The twin female system. Because if you've got feet walking around on it, remember the tennis shoes from YG? F you pay me. Give me my money. I gave you your host body. That's why Peter said in the Acts of Peter, I deliver up my body to them that take it. Receive it ye therefore ye unto whom it belongeth. Because the host body system belongs to the earth. It doesn't belong to heaven. 
in here there's male and female. In heaven there's neither male nor female. There's neither Greek nor Jew. But on the earth there is. And the earth is attached to the pit. The, the, the host body is attached to the pit. It's inherently evil. And it's attached to the other side. It's just a shell that we walk around in, guys. <laughs> okay, let me show you something crazy. Here you go. You see Hillary Clinton at the women's. Uh, center or whatever, like, da, 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 da. oh, wow, no freaking way, what, are you kidding me, you can't make this stuff up, look at it, and you know, here's another one, it's kind of a joke, but it's true, they, why would they turn the M&W upside down on Miracle Whip? You see what I'm saying? So this manifests into reality, you guys. Let me show you men's and women's, like, watch this. Let, watch this. Men's and women's, male and female. See it right there, male and female. So they literally cut the parchment. It's like an M and a W next to each other. Look at that. That's insane. That is completely Insane. I don't even know what to say except it's insane. Uh-huh. There you go. A chirograph. Okay, so what was Johnny talking about? Well, Johnny was right here saying that our Lord has blotted out the handwriting. Huh. Something handwritten like a chirograph or chirograph that is a legal document or bond like usually showing ownership of ordinances, civil laws, ecclesiastical decree that was against us. Look at that. Kata down, told you. And was contrary to us. Covertly an opponent. See, our entire record against us now is proven was down. Thank you, Fallon. Woo! Yeah, Fallon left that. I I could not believe what happened when I read this thing. I was like, oh my God. And see, by understanding it, we have spoiled, we have stripped naked. That twin female thing is stripped naked. There's nowhere that energy, that twin female energy, that parthenogenesis thing, busted. Done. Yeah, it's over. That's it. So that's why the Vatican's a snake. So now the Lord has allowed me to make a public show. See right here, public show. There it is. To make a public show and to exhibit publicly, openly triumphing over them to make an acclamatory procession. And uh, back in the days of Rome, when you used to beat the other team and you used to conquer them, they would take all the prisoners and march them through the street showing that you had beat them and you're seeing that we just beat them because of our Lord. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, uh, guys, I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I don't know that I'll ever be able to do justice to these scriptures that the Lord gave me. I'm trying my best just to show you how exciting this really is. Look at this, a chirograph. You're kidding me. I mean, look, like I said, all you got to do is look at Hillary Clinton at the Women's Council thing. Look at that. <laughs> it's so crazy because it was a twin female thing that destroyed us. Here's another thing you may or may not know. Like an eight-pointed star right side up represents Jesus. An eight-pointed star right side up. But when you turn it upside down, it represents Lucifer. How would you know which one's which, really? Well, it's kind of interesting that we have this system called the flesh because by by having the truth hidden within the system, discovering the truth proves everything. Do you understand? Like it's a joy to be in the system and proving the absolute existence of God just by showing the other side. By showing their side, we're proving the existence of El, the Almighty God. <laughs> Anyway, like, huh? yes, yes. Now, look, could anyone ever explain, hey, guys, why does Ozzy Osbourne have these two little twin girls with this girl's eyes all zoned out, wide, 
whited out like demonic possession? And why is this little girl sitting here like a doll and she's got a slave call, a slave shackle on her leg? Why? No rest for the wicked because this is their system. This is the wicked system. Twin female. That's why Ozzy's sitting on this throne with the, the, the skulls behind him. He represents the pit. A no-brainer. Why is Drake got his eyes all whited out like the little girl's uh, scorpion? Because what comes out of the pit? Scorpions. Because that's their energy. So no brainer. Why did Drake just do a new album with whoever this other person that says treacherous twins? I mean, how do you get that one in? Uh, because he knows. You want to see the system? There's the system. And the Lord let me discover thy bow was made quite naked. The uh, the other half, see the other half, the other half of the rainbow was made quite naked. That's what he let me, you know, dig up and bust. Anyway, okay, I'm freaking out. <laughs> so crazy. All right, so God bless her. You know, I don't think she knows, but heck, yeah. And then, um, then the application of it. Now, ready? Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, ready? Proverbs. It is the glory of Elohim to conceal. Okay, watch this. Here we go. Let me just let me just go to Proverbs uh twenty-five. Here we go. Ready. Okay, here we go. Proverbs twenty-five. It is the glory of Elohim, see Elohim, gods of the Supreme God, to conceal, to hide by covering, to keep secret, to conceal oneself. But it is the honor of kings to search out the matter, to penetrate, to examine intimately, to find out for the heaven of the heaven for height and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. You know what the word unsearchable? Ayin. Oh my gosh. I mean, my brain. <laughs> All right. So now you want to make sense of everything in the world? You want to go to the folders that the Lord's let me put together for you. You want to know why Nancy Pelosi is such a lunatic? She's a double downer. This is what she serves. She serves this. This is what she serves. That's it. That's what's going on. She belongs to this organization. If you belong to that organization, do you think you have everybody's well-being in mind? I don't think so. Now you know why all the bombings are printed on U.S. currency. Who's doing it? The serpent race. Now you know why police cars have a shield that's the serpent race. Because this is their flesh show. Now you know why Akhenaten has a serpent being inside of him. Because they're the ones that turned us down. They run the twin system. That's why the Statue of Liberty is standing in between two big DNA strips called the Twin Towers, representing Cain and Abel, representing the twin system, and she's holding a torch in her hand that's really a penis, and she's standing on top of an 11-pointed star that represents the host body system, representing the angels that came into the twin system. Not arguable. Awesome. Okay, now I'm just going to take a breather. Now I got this out. At least I got this out. So before anything weird happens, like my whole program crashes and I freak out and I start crying, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to load this up. And now it's at least out there. Colossians 2. Let me read it one more time. Let me read to you one more time. Colossians 2. Ready? Here it is. This is the greatest thing, the most awesome proof of everything. So you guys can be at peace because the end's here. The end of the world's here. Okay, here it is. That your hearts might be comforted, be knit together in love unto all the riches of the full assurance, entire confidence of understanding 
a mental putting together to the acknowledgement, to the recognition, epinosis, full discernment, to know absolutely of the mystery of God in, in whom is hid all the treasures of wisdom. Okay, and we are complete. See, we are to make replete. We've been filled up again. So we're not like half this, half that. We've been filled up again. We are complete in him and we are buried with him. It means to assimilate spiritually. We've been assimilated spiritually with him. Wherein also we are risen with him to rouse from death, to raise up together and with the faith in the operation of God and you, he has quickened together with him, denoting union to reanimate conjointly and blotting out all your trespasses, blotting out figuratively to pardon sin and the handwriting, the chirograph, you know, which is split into two outs of the same bill that was down against us and was contrary and covertly opposed an opponent adversary and he took it out of the way nailing it to the cross having spoiled making an open show divest holy oneself by making them naked the uh, the principalities and powers making a public exhibit of them triumphing over them <laughs> oh, all glory to the king guys <laughs> so cool. all right i'm gonna load this up i gotta blow a chopar i have a really dry mouth i'm gonna try and drink some coffee which is probably the last thing i should do right now here's 100 no line entertainment it's just entertainment folks that's it Snark. Thank you so much. Boy, this is not entertainment, folks. This is the truth of everything. All right, let me see. I'm, I got to give this a little check. <laughs> coming I guarantee it unfortunately someone has gone and dug up that maybe my coat of arms isn't really a king's crown and a shofar okay all right love you guys in Christ peace and grace oh where's my bear bear it's bear hooked on I love you guys so much my joy has been good to get to deliver this to you guys and it yeah, I'm sorry it's taken so long to get the scripture to you guys, but it's been a rough, rough, rough couple. Yeah. Anyway, this is you. I love you in Christ. We are all being knit together in love. Not a hate channel. Not a make hateful, constant hate party videos. No, we don't do that. That's not what Christians do. That's what something else does. Okay, this is you. This is Johnny. I love you. We're going to go home. How exciting, huh? Are you guys excited? I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to load this up now. I'm going to shut up. And then I now the pressure's off at least. And then I can get back to this stuff. Okay, guys, peace and grace, and I'll see you very soon.